It's time to deck the halls with boughs of holly. It is the season to be jolly. Welcome to the Barnacle Inspiration Series. We're doing more of our Bismus Christmas episodes, and today we are going to be tackling 10 fan submitted mocks as a little extra special treat for you. You know how this works. You've watched the episodes a bunch. If you haven't, welcome to the show. You'll catch on quick. But for now, let's begin with the first mark. We're going to cover 10, like I said. And the first one is Haze Unit by Golf Hotel. So this mark has a pretty rad gun. And I really like the fact that it's a different color scheme to him, you know? I always think that's cool. And especially the, the beautiful contrast of this blue up against the orange there really makes the gun pop. And it's a really unique gun too, the fact it kind of has this interesting almost sort of shield on the front of it, this like little protective guard thing or something. It looks great, it's a very interesting kind of sci-fi like design on this gun, it's just unique and really cool. So I love the specific contrast between the colours of the two of them there. And also the fact that there are little slight blue elements on the mock, so it still does kind of nicely partner with it, you know, the eyes are that trans blue. There's these awesome blue rubber bands on the arms of this mock. And I also really like that because, well one, like I said, the colours match, but also two, just the idea of putting some rubber bands on a mock like that, so it kind of looks like, you know, wires or just some sort of interesting little detail there. I kind of see it as, yeah, a little like exposed wires or just sort of little, little tiny pistons or something like that, something crazy. It's really fitting and really unique. And it's a little fun detail that you don't really see every day, and that's just as simple as just, you know, finding a nice place to insert that rubber band there. It works well. Also, this mock uses at least four brick separators, which is crazy cool because those are just useless pieces that if you're like me and you get a lot of different Lego sets, you probably have a lot of brick separators. If you ever see me at a Lego convention, ask, I'll probably give you a brick separator. Now I gotta bring brick separators with me to a Lego convention, but I have that many, you can just take them. Regardless though, it's awesome to see them being used on a mock, and so well as well. There's a lot of really awesome, sharp, defining angles on this mock, giving it this really awesome, agile, robotic, kind of mecha look. And a lot of that's also being reflected in some of the crazy poses he's in in some of these images as well. And I think the angles and the shape and texture even of these brick separators also reflect that. So it's, it's cool that the addition of these brick separators isn't really an afterthought, it's actually informing a lot of the design. Because I do see a fair few people who use brick separators and it's kind of, I don't want to say forced, but there are times that it can look a little forced putting a brick separator into a mock. But yeah, like I said, they're so deliberately used here and that's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's, it's rare to see a, a nice part use there on a brick separator, but this is a, this is a very fine example of that. So nice work. Quite exceptional work there, I must say. Also pretty cool head design here as well. Really does continue that uh, robotic look that this mock has. And also kind of continues that agile design with the kind of more refined textures on it. It's really, really cool. This is a really, really fun mock with a lot of really interesting little details that uh, if you take a bit of a deep dive into the mock, you can uh, really spot and see that they're, they're pretty cool. So nice work there. Let's move on to the next mock, which is Protector of the Jungle Land by Timothy. So here's the thing. Everybody's always like, hey, check out my sick mark. He's got this super cool sword. And swords, man, they're great. Swords are awesome. Every cool knight, every cool warrior, every man and his dog has a sword. Literally, have you played the new Pokemon game? That dog has a sword in its mouth. But I digress. Swords are cool. But you know what's also cool is shields. I think shields are underrated. I don't see nearly enough shields, man. And this mark... He is Billy Broadshield, man. He is, he's got an awesome shield, and that's kind of his primary weapon. And I like that, man. Captain America has a shield as his primary weapon, and Captain America is rad. So be rad like Captain America and have a cool shield. This has been a PSA on shields. Thank you for listening. Regardless, though, really cool shield design here, kind of combining a lot of different blades and axe pieces, and actually straight up using the kind of... Well, it, it came on as like a wagon wheel piece on a friend's set there but it also came as that really nice ornate detailing on a Kimu shield. Adding that little, uh, little, little nice little detail bit in there really creates this uh, beautiful ornate texture to the shield. And I love that. It does a lot to the shield, and the, the gold of that complements the gold Akimu mask nicely as well. And, uh, you know, this mark has a very, gr you know, kind of trans-green, trans-yellow kind of colour scheme with uh, little hints of, uh, of, you know, bits of silver thrown in there. And so you could argue that the gold mask seems a little out of place, but by putting the bit of gold on the shield there, it helps tie it all together. So that's a nice little addition as well. Really, really like that. Also, he's got a gun arm as well. Gun arms and shields, man. That's the combo of dreams. It's a good, good design. Really, really nice. Also, Timothy here, he's a bit of a younger builder when he sent in his submission. I don't have the email up in front of me, so I apologize that I can't get my facts exactly right, 
This is another one of our younger builders here who might be a little bit more new to Bionicle and that's awesome to see that even at a younger age here when Bionicle is not a thing you can buy in stores, we still got some younger builders there getting heavily into the Bionicle. That is awesome. So good job, buddy. You've made a really cool mock with some great little additions here. Very nicely done. The next mock we've got is Rhaegar by Damon Elsley. Emsly. David Emsly. I really wish I didn't show the names on the slides because then I could just be like, by Damon, and you'd be like, that was probably correct. And I'd be like, yeah, it was. But... You see it in front of you, so you know how terrible I am at pronouncing things. Of course I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong. I'm doing the best I can. That's all that anybody can ask for is if you're doing the best you can. Besides the point though, this is a cool mock by Mr. Damon. And again, I'm giving you give you another PSA here. Public safety announcement, public public mocking announcement. A, a PMA, if you will. There's a big issue with mocks these days. Do you want to know what that big issue is? It's something that many mocks, probably about 99% of the mocks I see, lack. Do you want to know what that is? Mustaches or any form of facial hair. And this mock has a mighty fine mustache of trans orange little, uh, little bit of a handlebar mustache there kind of just flowing out of his beautiful skull spider face there. And that's super rad. That's super, super cool. You might be like, Ben, those are fangs. But I'd be like, uh-uh-uh, it's a mustache. I can see with my own two eyes. They're probably fangs. But regardless, I like to think it's a mustache. And he looks mighty fine with it. Especially that it's a trans orange mustache. If I had a mustache, I would make it trans orange. Of course I would. What a great idea. So really, really cool. I also really like what's going on with the torso of this mock here. It's using that Onowa big old torso piece. And I've, I've been on record before. I have said in many an episode that I dislike that piece. It is a big bulky part and it's hard to use. Unless you're building some big old Titan guy, it's just, it's just you're gonna have a hard time. But this mock actually uses it quite well. I especially love how he's kind of partnered it with those really big bulky kind of shoulder pieces there. They're in gun metal there. They're a little bit more spikier. They came on pretty much every one of the skull villain sets from Binocle G2. It's a nice part. And so, yeah, kind of giving this mock these really broad shoulders and this big old torso, he does look like a kind of more heavy set villain here. Uh, and it's cool. It, he uses that torso in a really effective way that doesn't just look overtly bulky and overtly big. It, it, it works here. And also kind of buffing out the legs and other parts of this mock too. It, it works. It flows nicely. It doesn't look out of place, which sometimes I feel like that torso can look a little out of place. So yeah, really nice way of integrating a really difficult to use part, in my opinion. Also, as C3PO once said, my parts are showing. I apologize, Anthony Daniels. You do that way better than I do. But here he is naked. Here he is as just a frame. We've, uh, of course, done some frame episodes in the past, and you really liked those. They did very well. Uh, so here's how you'd make this mock if he didn't have his armor. A and there's his armor as well. So if you're like, I really like this mock. I want to just full-on recreate this. There's the armor he used, and there's the frame. That's more or less a, a fully sick breakdown image, isn't it? So there you go. You can uh, study that as you please and rework that frame for your own designs. Why not uh, take aspects of this frame, and of course credit Mr. Damon if you just straight up copy it, and uh, use that frame on one of your own designs and see how you can armor it up yourself. And you've got the beginnings of a really nice mock. Pretty cool. So that was Rhaegar. Let's move on to the next mock, which is To Attempt to Ancient Guardian of Corpus Namga by Golf Hotel. All right, that's the second time Golf Hotel's been in this, and that guy's name is not Golf Hotel. All right. I changed the way that I make the things. I had some issues before, and I thought I resolved it. I didn't! Pausing the episode and fixing that! So, issue fixed. This is Toa Temtut, Ancient Guardian of Corpus Namga, by Bonktacular Productions. I apologize. It's Christmas time. It's a busy time. That's the mistake I made. Not just not realizing that I forgot to change the name. We won't even remember it. We'll just we'll just glaze over that issue. Haha. -ha. So before we talked about how cool swords were, but how underrated shields were. Well, guess what? This mock has both of that. It has a sword and shield as the one thing, which is great. Kind of reminds me of Captain America's uh, shield in Infinity War. How he kind of uh, slammed those Outriders' faces with the sharp part of the shield there. It was kind of a cool looking kind of different take on a, on a shield weapon there which is awesome. It's a really cool way of combining multiple different weapons and shields and things into one really cool weapon. So I said, there's a, there's a, there's a distinct lack of shields. Well, 
now you can have both. So this mock is a tower of plasma. Now plasma is an actual official Lego element, and this is actually, by Lego element I mean Bionicle element and the Bionicle lore and storyline, and the actual official colours of a tower of plasma are orange and white. Let's head on over to old buddy Biosector, the old Bionicle wiki here, and read what it says. So, no tower of plasma, I'm quoting Biosector now, uh, no Tower of Plasma have been seen in the main story, so it is unknown what their personalities were generally like. But are we really gonna judge a book by its cover and assume what a Tower of Plasma is like based on what we saw in things? No, we are not. So Tower of Plasma, there are others, I think Tower of Psychotics was another one. Tower of Iron, Plant Life, Sonics, Shadow, Magnetism. There's a whole bunch of different elements that we never really got characters for. Obviously you got stuff like Tower of Fire, Water, Air, Stone, Earth, all that sort of stuff that you did get official characters that had those elements, but in the vast lore of Bionicle, there are a bunch of other elements that uh, were out there as well, and they had set kind of colour schemes as well, and so as I was originally going to say, quoting Biosector once again, a Tower of Plasma's armour was usually various shades of orange with white acting as a secondary colour. It also says all Tower of Plasma were male. It's 2019, man! If we want a female Tower of Plasma, we gon' have one. If we want a female Toroplasma, or a male Toroplasma, or a non-binary Toroplasma, we could also do that. Why not? It's 2019, or 20... No, it'll be 2019 by the time I post this episode. It's almost 2020. We can do what we want. Besides the point, though, that's the official colours, but it even specifically said usually various shades of orange and white acting as a secondary colour. So if you're like, I want to make a Toroplasma, that sounds super rad. Do so. That's the set colours that's uh, a part of the law. If you want to be a, a stickler for the law, you can. Or if you don't, you can make a tower of plasma that's purple, because why not? And you might be like, what is plasma? Because, you know what, that's a great question. And while I'm on Biosector, a tower of plasma's elemental power gave them near-perfect command over the flameless, superheated substance called plasma. As such, at a basic level, they could create, control, and absorb plasma. Examples of this included creating a blast of plasma, forming, forming barriers of plasma, or superheating objects such as an enemy's weapon. They could also create and manipulate superheated matter at will by expanding elemental energy. However, they were far more limited in the use of their abilities than most other Toa, as Plasma did not exist in a natural state outside of fire or lightning. All Toa of Plasma would have been confined to using their own personal stores of elemental energy, resulting in far less active use of their powers. That's actually really cool! I really like that. That was an interesting read. I also kind of like the idea that they have to have their own little supplies of it kind of thing, whether or not that means they need like a big barrel of plasma on their back that they actually like physically draw out of or something, or they just have kind of like this mock here, these little uh, kind of trans orange patches that just have abundances of plasma in them. And by the way, using those little trans orange sphere pieces, that really screams plasma to me. I like that. It's kind of like in Pokemon, Team Plasma, when you beat them and they're just like, PLASMA! That's what those orange balls make me say. They go, PLASMA! That's how I feel. PLASMA! It's good. There we go. Didn't think I'd be talking about Pokemon in this episode, but I am. Twice, actually. I was speaking about... As a tangent, unrelated. That's why these episodes were longer last time. Let's not make it too long this time. Regardless, we've had a bit of fun talking about Toe of Plasma. We've talked about this specific Toe of Plasma. Lots to love about this mock, and... Awesome to see how closely uh, he's following the old Barnacle lore there, because if you need a bit of inspiration, reading up on some of the original lore is never a bad idea. Do it. You never know what you might learn. The next mock we've got is Aztec Warrior by Iggs. So this is a really, really cool mock with a really funky colour scheme. So of course, this is called Aztec Warrior because it's based off an old Aztec Warrior. And here is exactly that, an Aztec Warrior. So I love some of the little beats that Iggs has copied off of this but also how he's taken it into his own light, and I'm sure he didn't look at this exact image and base the mock off of this, but you know, at least specific elements of it he took into account, you know. So for example, the very similar colour schemes of the gold, the red, and the, the, the green there as well, that's very much being conveyed on this mock here. And I think instead of the, the, the hardened, tan male body of this Aztec warrior, he's just replaced that with a uh, kind of neutral black there, which works well. I also like the kind of headdress that he's given this mock, using those flame pieces like that to kind of recreate the feathers, and using one of those funky Chima pieces there to kind of look like that bird mouth on that kind of bird-like Aztec helmet there. That's really, really cool. There's also really beautiful shaping in the torso there, using a bunch of different masks, whether it's the Brutaka masks as shoulder pads, those Vokama masks as his manly pecs, 
or that uh, Rakshi head there in the middle is just is just another part of the body. It looks great. Some other masks being used as well. Kind of the majority of the thigh there is uh, two different uh, green masks there. And we got the old red Baraki Kalma mask there. Baraki? Bar yeah, no, Baraki. I thought I said Rakshi there. I got confused, but I didn't. Uh, using that as kind of like an interesting kind of um, loincloth-like thing there. It's a bit Kalma's a little bit insulted, but uh, it works well, you know? I don't think I'd want my mask being used as crotch armor, but uh, it works well here. I also like the kind of slightly different addition uh, with the weapons here, giving him these really interesting kind of claw-like uh, weapons on his hands there. Uh, j I mean, I'm looking at one image of an Aztec warrior. If, if I was building an Aztec warrior, I'd look at like maybe, I don't know, 20 different images of them or something. Um, here he's got a, 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 a shield <laughs> and a spear, which is great. Uh, but I like the, the addition of these Malum Claws here because the colours really reflect uh, the colour scheme of this Aztec warrior here. So it's, it's quite fitting. And it's also kind of in line with this bird mask that he's got as well. It's very clever. So a lot going on here. A lot to love. Uh, really, really nice attention to shaping using a bunch of different masks. And really nice attention to the colour scheme here, which matches the source material. So nice work. Awesome. I, it always blows me away, colours, how, uh, how much you can... Uh, Really make a nice mock when you uh, when you play your colors right. On to another nice mock. This is Gremlin King by Cadrin Lance. So you just got to say the name with conviction, and everyone thinks you get it right. But then there's those people, much like Mr. Lance, who are like, "That was wrong, Cassie. What are you saying?" And I did the best I could. I'm sorry, Caden. Kate, Kate, uh, Mr. Lance, Gremlin King. What a great mock. But like, legit, it's a really, really cool mock. When I first saw the submission, when I was just grabbing the 10 submissions from my emails, I, I kind of chuckled because I was like, this guy's super cool and super cute. I love his big old goofy ears and his big, big old eyes. Kind of reminds me of something else from co pop culture right now. Um, very, very cute. I also love the fact that a lot of that is just simply connected with a rubber band there. Uh, it's, it's a bit more of a simple and easy connection, and you would argue that that's illegal. Yeah, you probably could say that. But, or non-purist, you know, whatever term you want to use, whichever one's the correct term to use, ah, pff, who cares? It looks cool. And it's a really clever way of achieving a design if you can't find the connection points for it. Lego does have official rubber bands. You could argue that that is entirely legal and purist and all those words. So maybe it's something to, to think about because you know, the entire bit of this head is just attached around that one tire with those rubber bands. It works well. And using those wings as big old ears, I like that. It's nicely done. I also like the little printed elements on this guy's feet here. Just an interesting way of adding a little bit of a pop of uh, detail or color there. It's, it's clever. So yeah, really nice head design and these little claws as well. It really helps to create this uh, cute little gremlin. It's very effective. Nicely done. The next mark is by Victor Vu and is called Victor Toa of Mana. So I like the idea of a Toa of Mana. That's pretty cool. You know, as soon as I think of mana, I think of more like medieval fantasy roleplay games and stuff. And the mana bar is always gr uh, blue. Why did I say green for me? It's always blue. Your mana is that mystical magic sort of stuff. And so I like the fact that he's put trans blue on the mock here. And the fact that the rest of the mock is the silver or gun metal. That's also quite fitting because, again, it reminds me of medieval fantasy, like armor, that sort of stuff. So I think it's a really uh, good choice of colors to reflect a, a toa of mana. You know, it's not a concept I've heard before unless you're like, um, Kathy, if you refer to episode 123 of the Bionicle Inspiration series, you'll see that there was a Toe of Manor there, so in fact you have heard that name before. Alright, 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 whatever. But still, it's a new concept, isn't it? At least to me right now. And I think this is a pretty fitting colour scheme for a Toa of Manor. I like the wings on his head here, kind of reminds me of Thor's helmet. Doesn't really have a helmet in the MCU, but in comics and stuff um, he does have those sort of funky feathers coming out. That's a fun little addition there. Uh, and works well just simply using those Chima wing minifigure pieces there and attaching them onto the back of the mask there. It works well. And it's just a, an interesting way of kind of doing something else to the mask, just making it look a bit more unique. The hand design here is also pretty cool. It's just a, a subtle slight addition to the typical, like, T-bar piece and finger design that, like, Hydraxon had and a lot of different mocks have. Um, so it's simply just using one of the Technic brick pieces, the 1x2 Technic brick pieces, uh, adding in one of those 1x2 modified plates with the little bars on the side, and then attaching those Exoforce bad guy robot arm finger pieces onto that. And then that way you can, like this, add the studs on it and kind of find other little system additions that you can add onto those wrists and... Not, not the wrists, that's the wrong word. Ro uh, add onto those knuckles, fingers, any other part of the hand there. And just detail it up a little bit. Kind of uh, looks like a little bit more of an extension of the armor. Uh, just a little bit more sort of uh, sharp, rougher knuckles there. It's 
pretty cool. It looks really good. It's a slight change to the hand design there, but works really well and you can add stuff to it. It's good. The next mark we've got is Kori Toa of Ice by Brickway Studios. So in the email, he said that Kori, or Kori, he has a little little line above the O there. So Kori, I don't know how you... I don't know how that changes the pronunciation. It just does. It is, it's Corey. Corey is an artificial intelligence android. And I like that. Just, just, just a fun little backstory bit. But also the mask choice for that. So you got Stormers, the original Stormer mask there, and you flip it upside down and you get this interesting kind of, these two interesting lines that almost look a bit like eyes. And it's a really interesting way of uh, adapting that mask there. And I think that mask is perfect for this kind of artificial intelligence android or any kind of robot. And I think it's a really nice choice for that. So that's always something to consider too. If you look through your mask collection and go, okay, what, what do I immediately think of when I see this mask? Does it look like an interesting android? Does it look like a robot of some kind? or does it look a bit more like an eagle or something crazy that I, and that could be what you're building. You go, okay, well, this is the perfect piece for what I'm making. I think it's a really nice specific mask choice there. It really reflects the character well. I also like the weapons that this mask got here using uh, that Metis icicle shield piece there as this funky kind of, uh, I don't know, interesting blade. Just, I think that would be a pretty sharp and scary blade that I wouldn't want jammed into my torso if I was in combat. Uh, and the fact that it kind of trails back with those ice pieces there. It's a cool looking weapon and a, a great way of playing with those different ice pieces. There's a lot of different ice pieces you can play with here. There's only two of them, but there's a heaps more. Uh, there's like Strax Axe. There's Gelu's Weapons. There's also Strax Weird Icicle Shoulder Pieces. There's all sorts of different ice pieces you could play with, whether they're weapons or just ice pieces in general. So uh, definitely if you want to play around with some funky weapons that really fit with an element, uh, take a look at some ice stuff. It's, uh, it's right up your market. So yeah, some cool stuff going on here. On to the second last mock. And this is one that's hilarious. I love it to death. It's called Seasons Beating Tree by Celtic Lad 2. So this was what the email said when he sent this in. He said, Seasons greetings. Seasons greetings to you too, my friend. He said, attached are a couple photos of a mock made for a Christmas themed X amount of parts or less challenge that he did a couple years ago. This mock is called Seasons Beatings, and it is uh, a Seasons Beating Tree, and he ironically shouts Timber as he cuts down his foes in a never-ending bloodlust for revenge. So the idea that people sing carols in front of the Christmas tree, and then, you know, they, they meet their friends, and they're like, oh, Seasons Greetings, Seasons Greetings, and this tree the whole time is like, no, it's Seasons Beatings, and I'm going to kill you. And the, 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 the tree comes to life, grabs the axe that cut it down, and goes on a never-ending bloodlust for revenge. Terrifying, horrific, R-rated movie stuff here, but hilarious. <laughs> and a very great play on the term Season's Greetings, which is what you're saying, it's a holiday season. It's great. I like that a lot. It's very, very funny. And all in jest, of course. Uh, it's good. That's the perfect thing to do, you know? It's Christmas time. Why not make a funny little pun mock like this or a funny little joke mock or something related to Christmas? I have done Christmas episodes on the Bionicle Inspiration series before in the past uh, and they've been good fun. There's all sorts of different interesting Christmas themed mocks out there. Why not make some yourself? And maybe give that Christmas episode a watch too. I'll see if I can put that in the cards at the end of this video. If not, I'll just post it in the little community tab just as a little refresher there. So that's cool. Why not make a Christmas mock of your own much like this? The final mock we've got today. This is by Morningstar Mocks and is called Ectum, something like that. This mock is super cool. Again, the little description in the email here said that he is an architect and overseer of the Comic Web. Now he wrote Comic Web, I'm gonna assume that's Cosmic Web. So he's an architect and overseer of the Cosmic Web. Or Comic Web, I don't know, could be either. Uh, and this comic slash Cosmic Web is a system of interconnected wormholes spanning throughout the cosmos. Pretty cool, and I think Quite honestly, through the color choices on this mock and the weird general shapes and style and frame of this mock, I 100% see that. This looks like some funky, crazy god from another universe, and that's exactly what it is. So that's rad. So the colors that he's used here, the black, the gold, this regal dark blue, this trans purple, this trans pink, it looks very godlike. You know, these trans colors give it this ethereal, space-like, otherworldly quality. Uh, the, the the black and the gold really resembles like Anubis or any sort of interesting like Egyptian god. The really long neck that he's got, these longer limbs, these funky shaped legs. Even the fact that he's got like four arms as well, he looks out there godlike and just just 
different. Like, he's unhuman. He's from another world, you know? There's a lot going on there that really effectively communicates that. I love that. Another thing that I think is super cool, I've not really seen it before, is this weapon. The fact that he's used a bunch of these one-by-one trans-purple bricks here and then kind of uh, change the orientation of them. And also, too, how I believe it's a little little bit of flex tube there, how it kind of just darts off a little bit. It's a little bit of a bend in it. And there's this funky level of distortion with this weapon. Kind of like he is traveling between worlds and the, the, the bounds of reality are shifting. I love that. I love the distortion in the weapon there. It's so unique and so... I don't know, it gives you this sense that he has some really crazy, scary cosmic power that he can, uh, you know, change the very fabric of the universe or something like that. Uh, and that's just simply through little slight additions, like a bit of a bendy flex tube and some bending of some bricks. That is awesome. Uh, really, really, really cool way of doing a weapon there. It may not be a shield, but it's still pretty cool. So I like that a lot. There's a lot I love about this, actually. A really, really unique and different mock with... Uh, some really, really uh, clever stuff that's being communicated on here. It's awesome to see. And speaking of things that are awesome to see, we've seen some fantastic marks in this episode of the Barnacle Inspiration series. So, of course, I've had so many submissions because I decided to do Abyssmus Christmas. And my whole aim was to <laughs> go through a bunch so I'd have covered more. But you guys have submitted so much that it kind of defeated the purpose. But eh, who cares? This was still fun anyway. But hey... Don't let that discourage you. Still, you can submit some mocks to the show if you so please. How can you do so? Through the email you're currently seeing on your screen. Send me some pictures, any other information you feel is important about the mock. Send it to that email and you'll be good. You'll be uh, in the draw to be on the show at some point in time. That uh, email address is also in the description as well if you want to copy paste that. Also in the description are the links to today's mocks. Some of them didn't have links because they just sent it to the uh, email. They didn't actually have a, a place that they posted it. But a whole bunch of them do have places that they posted it where you could leave some love on their content, give them a follow, all that sort of stuff. Be sure to do that. And also while you're there, you can find links to some of my social media like my Instagram, my Facebook, my Patreon, my Flickr, my Facebook, all sorts of stuff. On my Instagram, I post all sorts of other cool Lego content. And yes, I might even post pictures of shields minifigures holding shields, or shield from Avengers. All the different types of shields. Hashtag put some shields in your bionicle. That's way too long a hashtag. I don't know, I am making some hashtag. Just make some shields. And while you're at it, make some mocks. I hope we inspired you today. Happy watching, happy building, happy Christmas. See you in the next episode, guys. Bye for now.